welcome to episode one of my podcast. My name is Sabrina Matti, and I you have no idea how excited I am to be starting this. I have been wanting to start this since late last year, and I have been waiting for the right time to do it, and also trying to get together the equipment that I desired to do this, because I don't want to start off with mediocre equipment like recording on my phone or just some basic headphones or something or a basic microphone because I don't want to go in right away with complaints of audio (laughs) so and I plan on putting this podcast these episodes out on iTunes as well as YouTube and you can go find me on YouTube. If you just type in youtube.com slash Sabrina Matti, you should be able to find this podcast there under the podcast playlist or category on my channel. I plan on having this podcast mostly just audio. I would like to maybe some every now and then probably have a video and audio, but I think for now... I'm setting up this podcast in a way so I don't have to worry so much about the visuals because I know people are picky about visuals, whether it's done in a nice setting, and then also like I don't want to have to always make an excuse that I have to be made up for the camera. That's also another thing, and I know there's a lot of judgment that comes into play too if you do video podcasting. There will be people out there who will literally just not want to watch you or something just because of how you look or whatever so (laughs) I want to also close that off and I want people to just focus on the content that I speak about rather than having to see anything. Every now and then I think it'll be cool to have maybe a video podcast depending on what it is like if I do interviews with people or guests if you choose that if the audience votes for seeing us talk with each other rather than just hearing our voices that'll be up to you guys I'll leave that completely open for you but I think for now for a while I will just be keeping it strictly with just strictly audio based also forgive me for the first few episodes that I record if I say uh a lot or um or if there's some like weird audio noises or echoes I know I need to work on the echo because I'm recording in my apartment and it's a very spacious place. This microphone is so good, you might even hear the street outside, like I hear a car coming right now. I'm sure you can hear it too. So I apologize in advance for any noises you might hear. I will try my best to adjust that and get that fixed later down the line. But if there's anything else that's really bothering you audio-wise, just feel free to comment or give me any suggestions and please do it nicely. I am new to doing this by myself, and there's only so much I can do, and I just wanted to get this stuff out there for you guys, so I didn't want to think too much about perfecting this stuff right away. (laughs) So the biggest goals I have in mind for this podcast, I plan on gearing it towards a lot of mental wellness, self-care, self-help. I would love for it to be a lot about emotional intelligence and maybe every now and then include some metaphysics or concepts like the law of attraction, reality transurfing, all this stuff. And then every now and then I would love to record like little, I would love to do like tarot readings for forecasts for every new moon and full moon. So that way it gives me an opportunity to record like a solid, consistent episode twice a month if I don't have any other content to talk about. But I want this podcast to serve you guys. I want this podcast to be something that you can go to and listen to if you're feeling crappy about yourself or if you need some motivation or if you need to hear words that make you feel like you are not alone and you want to connect not only with yourself more or with people out there more or you just want to like just get a better understanding of a way where you can figure out how to better a relationship with yourself or other people maybe get through depression or anxiety or just know how to create a better way of living for yourself out of just pure joy and happiness 
and with least stress as possible. I would also like to provide a little bit of magic to your life too. Like I really love listening to a lot of energy forecasts on YouTube. I listen to astrologers or just people who are just have the ability to just kind of sense the energy of the collective on a whole of what's going on in the world. So that way I don't feel as alone myself in particular and I can see that I'm not the only person going through whatever I'm going through in the moment. And if you're not into that sort of thing, feel free to skip those episodes and go straight to the ones that are about our mind and more about the subconscious mind or just, I don't know, productivity or just living your happiest life and living it to the fullest, so on and so forth. I'm going to be vulnerable for a moment. If it sounds like I'm out of breath, it's because I keep forgetting to breathe when I'm talking. And this tends to happen every single time I talk for a while and hear myself talk. I start to get a little nervous and then I start to get short of breath. So if I take breaths in between while I'm talking, that is why. <laughs> some things I would love to do with this podcast, some ideas. Feel free to shoot your own ideas my way if you, if any of these strike your interest or make maybe it sparks another idea. Please let me know in the comments down below or if this is on iTunes, I'm not sure how that works. If there's like a commenting section or if you want to just email me ideas, uh, maybe I'll set up an email that you guys can send your ideas to. One thing I would love to do is maybe I would love to do some book analysis or dissect some books. Maybe kind of like in a sense like give cliff notes on some really good books that I love to read or like they're not just any kind of books. They're mostly books that are about emotional intelligence or um, metaphysics, all that good stuff. There's a lot of books I have in my library that I need to read and a lot of them have just blown my mind. They have expanded so much of my knowledge and they've really changed the way I live my life mindfully. Another thing I would love to do is a figure analysis. So I would love to kind of observe people maybe icons in our world or maybe people who aren't necessarily icons and I would love to observe their life by potentially also gauging their mindset like for example say I pick out a celebrity and I'd love to like analyze some interviews and kind of pick apart like how they've manifested their life based on their mindsets and their attitudes and how they present themselves to us because we can learn a lot from celebrities obviously they're people we admire and everything and you know, there's also a lot that goes down that we don't know about, rightfully so, that's for out of respect for them, but in a concept of where we are trying to manifest a life for ourselves, and there's people out there that have an ex like that set an example of how it's done, it's great to analyze figures for this reason. Another thing I would love to do is interviews. I would love to interview a lot of people out there who study emotional intelligence um, or hygiene self-care, therapy, mental health, uh, metaphysics, all that good stuff, maybe astrologers. I would love to do, to include mental and physical exercises for you guys, provide this stuff for you guys so that you can incorporate it into your own life. And I would love to also just, when I'm kind of hitting some limiting beliefs, struggles or negative emotions maybe in my own life, um, and I feel inspired to have a conversation with you guys about this stuff, about these specific limiting beliefs or negative emotions, I would love to break them apart with you guys on a podcast. And hopefully, depending on the engagement with my audience, um, maybe I'll go on like Instagram or something and ask questions, or I can go live every once in a while on YouTube or something and have a conversation with you guys. I would love so that we can like work at these struggles and these negative emotions together not only for myself, but I feel like oftentimes when we go through something negative ourselves, we're not alone and other people can learn from it too, because more often than not, there are millions of other people out there going through the same exact thing. So this will also be kind of therapy for myself. So when I'm going through a tough time, I can have a moment to journal about it and turn it into a podcast episode and be completely vulnerable with you guys. And it can teach me to be more vulnerable myself and maybe it can inspire you all to be vulnerable yourselves too and be very open about it and you can share your stories too with me or with pe with everyone in general in the comments below or in our live streams 
maybe I can do episodes where I tell certain stories about certain limiting beliefs or struggles or emotions and how we get past it. See, there's so much that we can play with. And I'm super excited because I have another podcast with a couple coworkers of mine and it's going it's it's going well. I love it. I would just love to do something more personal and I would love to not have to depend on anybody to do this and just to depend on myself to do this and so that way I get to produce more and um, more will come of it. So, and I get to put more energy into it. It's a little harder when you're with a group because uh, there's a lot more planning that gets involved, especially where the podcast involves guests every single episode, that's a little tricky. So I wanted to set this up as easy as possible. That's why I'm recording at home. Literally, I'm recording in my bed right now and (laughs) I have no excuse to not be recording this. (laughs) So let's get started for episode one. I'm so excited because I wanted to start this episode and it took me, I, I I almost started podcasting last year but everything I tried just wasn't working technology wise and then one week I decided to go on Instagram and just tell people like hey ask me a question and I got a really really good question from somebody that I'm acquaintances with on Instagram Uh, they sent me a really really good question and I was like you know what I want to make my first podcast episode about this question because it's something that I identify with so personally, and it's something I still struggle with to this day, so why not make the first episode about it? So why don't we dive in, shall we? So episode one is basically going to be based on a question that I received via Instagram. The username is at Demi Loves Dado. I believe his name is Aaron. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry, please let me know. <laughs> But the username is spelled D-E-M-I-L-U-V-Z-D-A-D-O-H. And their question was, what are your tips and tricks for multitasking? Especially for people who fixate on things and hyperfocus. Is that a bad thing? We try not to limit our interests, but still. So I have a feeling why this question was asked and geared towards me because if you go on my personal Instagram at um, Sabrina Matti, you'll notice I don't have one specific thing or one specific hobby that I do on there. I have tons of hobbies and people kind of think that or get an idea that I'm constantly doing all of them all at once and producing so many results in all areas. And you guys all have to remember that Instagram is basically a highlight reel. So that's not the case with me. Like I don't always do personal artwork and draw all the time. I wish I could draw all the time for myself, but that's not the case. I work full time in animation. So I don't really draw too often because since I draw all day for work, I'm not as inspired to do it as often on my own downtime. So I typically just try to do tons of hobbies well not try like i do whatever i feel like in the moment and all that so yeah i'm guessing that this question was geared towards me for that reason because he probably you're i think it's a he uh again if i'm wrong i'm sorry but they probably see on my feed that i'm doing so many things and i'm flattered that you think i'm multitasking and you think i'm a great multitasker (laughs) But let's get into this question. Before we begin, let's assess it. We should begin by asking ourselves, why do we want to multitask or be good at tons of things? Is it because society measures people's worth by success and we measure our success by productivity? Is it because we see others getting recognized for their success on social media and assume they have their life together? Or is it because we see glorification in people who appear to quote unquote multitask? Or do we make it mean something negative about ourselves? Ask why you would think hyperfocus is a bad thing and where this limited belief might stem from. Who says it's not possible to hyperfocus as well as having an infinite, uh, infinite amount of interests? Why is hyperfocusing bad? for unlimited amount of interests. If only some interests are focused on and the rest aren't, what do you think that means about you and what are you so afraid of? How would hyper-focusing be a good thing? So 
assess this question, meditate on it, ask yourself all of these and about the belief itself. Here are my tips for this question. Tip number one, where focus goes, grows. If hyper-focusing is your tendency, this is never a bad thing for this very reason. It is important to note that we tend to dismiss our focus by observing ourselves in a lack mindset, meaning we can and always should do better. Remember to always celebrate growth and success no matter what it might be that you are focusing on. Know that no matter what, when focus is there, your knowledge and skill are expanding. Tip number two, where are you feeling resistance? And in contrast to that, follow your joy. Plus side of having multiple interests is if you are burnt out or uninspired with one thing, you have so many other interests to expand on. Rather than beating ourselves up for not focusing on an interest we think we should be doing, we should listen to our internal guidance system and ask ourselves, what do we feel like doing in that moment? If you can't make that step, sit with the resistance and ask yourself, what inside me believes so badly that I have to do this one thing right now? If you tell yourself what you haven't done up to that point, tell yourself what you have done and know no time has been wasted. Recognize and celebrate your growth. Consider your mood. Tell yourself it's okay to not be inspired 24 seven at will. Creativity is a fluid energy process and must always be approached with a playful mindset. Ask, what am I afraid of and what do I make this mean about myself if I don't focus on this one interest right now? For example, we can think that we're falling backwards or we're digressing in growth or progress or we're not succeeding in this area, which then in turn kind of makes us feel like we're of lower value or self-worth, etc. So... I struggle with this big time because, uh, for example, I trained with a fitness trainer for two years and I have an obsessive perfectionist kind of mentality and I used to believe that if I didn't go to the gym seven days a week for an hour to two hours at a time, and sometimes it even got worse, sometimes I believed I had to some days go twice a day, I believed that I was gonna lose progress or I was gonna lose uh, muscle strength and all of that. Um, and I get that a lot with dance too. Like if I don't dance for a bit, I, I get scared that I'm gonna get rusty really quick if I don't keep up with it. And what people often don't realize is that if you overdo or overwork one area, like for example, fitness, if you overwork your body, you actually do more harm to your muscles and your muscle gain and your progress than good. So this is really important to think about in that sense and just realize that we're kind of also taught to think like this uh, at a very young age. We're taught to that, you know, we're supposed to be constantly productive, constantly be working. And especially when you have to make something your job, like I'm an artist for a living. I've had character design jobs where I was expected to create literally every single day for eight hours a day. And that's really rough and we are not wired that way, <laughs> but somehow we have to make do with it or work our way around it. Or if we don't, we feel less about ourselves. Also, when I talk about multiple interests, it's also important to kind of think back to school where people taught, that, taught us that we had to focus in on one interest. Like in college, I remember in art college, when I wanted to get into animation, they always told me that I had to focus in on one area so that when I get into the field, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. And I feel like they were wrong about that. I feel like it was actually better for me as an artist to have multiple interests and multiple areas that I was good at where I could expand on my skills because later on down the line, I was able to bounce between different jobs and I was also able to like feel like, oh, if I'm getting burnt out doing this thing, then I can bounce doing this thing and this thing or one skill could facilitate another. So don't always feel like you have to focus in on one area. I think it's really great that we develop you know a love for different passions or hobbies or multiple interests or we expand our knowledge on everything that we're passionate about don't always limit yourself tip number three stop scheduling and planning your week 
based on your interests. Remember, you are human. Our emotions fluctuate and circumstances change. Inspiration isn't constant. Creativity isn't constant. And overwhelming yourself is exhausting. Taking a break and doing absolutely nothing is in the direction opposite of resistance, meaning it's okay. Oftentimes we beat ourselves up if we manage to not go according to the plans and goals we set for ourselves. So we set ourselves up for failure off the bat by structuring our time and emotions to be perfect when every day is different. So again, focus on celebrating what you have done, are doing, rather than overwhelming yourself with to-do lists and goals. Don't marry your to-do lists. Tip number four, meditation, meaning self-reflection and tuning into your body and your emotions. This can mean a variety of ways. You can meditate via journaling, you can do some breath work, yoga, I love to dance, I love music. It could be anything, it could be active movement meditation or it could be literally sitting in silence with your eyes closed or eyes focused on something and just allowing your thoughts to come and observing them neutrally. Let them go and you can also vent your thoughts in writing, that helps too. And the key of meditation is just not judging your thoughts. If you're tired, recognize that these thoughts are draining and overwhelming you and it's okay to surrender and just sleep or do something less productive. You are human. Sometimes our thoughts can literally be the most draining and exhausting thing. Like it, sometimes it makes us feel like we just ran a freaking mile. So, and recognize that's normal and it's okay. My personal favorite is doing gratitude lists and practicing abundance mentality versus lack mentality. So I have journals for these two specific things. Like I have a journal where I like to practice writing gratitude lists every, every day, which means I write everything that I'm thankful for. And then I have another journal where I will write down things that I attract abundantly. It could be anything, it could be gifts, it could be compliments, it could be anything luck that comes my way or money. And uh, I like to focus on gratitude because it helps with, it helps us train our mind to think more in a, a, like I said previously, an abundant mindset rather than a lack mindset, which is what we're often trained to do with ourselves. An example of my personal favorite meditation is dance because for me personally, it forces me to connect my mind to my body and just completely let go and practice presence. When you practice choreo or choreography, you have to let your body just flow. If you think too much, you become stiff and resistant. And um, if you like record yourself dancing, when this occurs, you can, you can actually uh, literally physically see it. So dance just helps me really practice presence and it helps me basically trust my body more and trust that my body knows what it's doing and it's it's connected with the music and it just feels really good to just stop thinking for a moment and just let go. I also love abstract painting for this reason too because you're not focused on the outcome, you're just focused on the journey getting there and you're enjoying every single moment of it and you're not judging every single stroke or every single color that you're throwing down or whatever, it's just literally playtime. Tip number five, practice emotional hygiene and self-care. Watch how you talk to yourself. That's the most important thing. Do things in accordance to filling your soul and raising your vibrations. So this means reflect on things that don't serve you emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, and practice healthy boundaries. You can, this is a great thing to meditate on, which goes back to tip number four. My favorite online spiritual guru lives her life by the concept of continuously living your life, asking yourself, quote unquote, what would someone who loved themselves do? So that can be an exercise that you do every single day, every, at every single moment. What would someone who loved themselves do? Practice emotional hygiene before bed to set our minds up for success in the morning to come. Oftentimes, before you go to sleep, that's the best time to program your mind to healthier mindful habits and programming, reprogramming your subconscious mind to better belief systems, to healthier vibrations. This is the best time of the day to do it if you want to 
manifest um, more self-care or, or more self-love or self-worth or maybe more abundance or, or wealth, focusing and meditating on all of this before you go to sleep is the best. That's why I often try m my own personal life to stay off my phone about a half hour before I go to sleep because I don't like to expose myself to feelings of lack of self-worth or guilt and all that when I scroll through social media because social media does expose that to a lot of um, lower vibrational feelings every now and then. It can kind of put us in that kind of mindset. So make sure you watch what you fill your mind with before you go to sleep. Tip number six, consider how some interests might facilitate others. For example, sometimes I'm in a more creative mood after I work out versus not having any physical exercise. So sometimes I will do that first if I'm feeling resistance towards other towards another interest. Tip number seven, actual multitasking. So podcasts, audiobooks, and YouTube videos are a great way that I like to expand my knowledge while doing activities that don't require using a large portion of, our, uh, of my brain. So I listen to this stuff while I work, while I drive, while I'm showering in the morning or while I'm getting ready, while I'm about to fall asleep. That's a really good time to listen to really healthy mindset type of things. Sometimes I like to listen to the stuff while I clean or while I work out, etc. Knowledge is still focus, power, expansion, and inspiration. So limit yourself to, again, to toxic news, podcasts, or reality TV, and try to learn about things that serve your expansion and your interests. So wherever focus goes, grows. So if you're trying to become a better musician, maybe listen to podcasts about tips and tricks about being a better musician. Or if you're trying to learn about the law of attraction and trying to incorporate that, incorporate that in your life more and listen to so much content that it becomes more of a conscious, um, more of a subconscious autopilot thing to do in your daily life and it becomes a habit. A healthy mindful habit then listen to more podcasts and videos and audiobooks about that kind of stuff this goes for all interests tip number eight remember before school and socialization there was playtime approach everything as if you were a child again and with no limiting thoughts or beliefs or preconceived notions this will lessen resistance and will allow you to just do what you want to do without excuses Remember how during recess as a child, we were given so many options to do what we wanted or play any sport we wanted to do without anyone telling us we can't for any weird reasons, unless, I don't know, you were bullied or something. <laughs> My therapist always tells me to also aim for a B plus at everything we do rather than a perfect A plus. It allows us to have more fun when we aren't always aiming for perfection right off the bat. So I try to do this, I set an intention of this every single time I go into any dance class that I take because at work, uh, this is the opposite of what I have at work. I'm always trying to make sure I give them my best output and my best work. And since I'm a technical artist, I'm always making sure everything is super clean and perfect. That's what's required. And at the end of the day, after work, I don't want to do that. I don't want to always be looking for perfection in every single thing I do. So when I go to dance class, I remind myself this is to have fun and you are on your own journey. Everyone else is on their own journey. You know, people like for when I compare myself to others, I always tell myself, yo, these people, some of these people have been dancing since they were little. I'm just giving my own specific example. This goes for art too. Like when I was in college and I used to compare myself to other artists, I used to tell myself these people probably draw a lot more than I do. And maybe their social life is a lot less than mine. And just remember the more you compare yourselves to other people and the more you set expectations for yourself, you're not gonna have fun. So just focus on just having fun and the journey of getting better. If we are too hard on ourselves, oftentimes a lot of, uh, we, we, just, we just quit. We don't want to deal with it and then we get demotivated and then this is, we create resistance within ourselves and then that's where actual uh, lack of progress happens. Tip number nine. Dream big with everything. Stop telling yourself you wish you can do that or I can never do that because that is a story you continue telling yourself. This is my biggest pet peeve is when 
people see something that I'm doing and they're like, oh, I wish I could do that. I can never do that. And or when people say that your your talent is something that you're born with and if you're not born with this talent, then you just can't do that. I've heard this so many times when it comes to drawing or like with anything at all and it bugs me so much because I've done so many things outside of my comfort zone and my box or whatever and I've been able to teach myself a lot of things that I haven't been quote unquote born with or grown up doing you know you can do anything you want to and everyone can start somewhere as long as you love doing it and you have passion for just learning about it so just stop telling yourself that stupid belief please <laughs> tip number 10 remember that time is linear the concept of having to reach goals by a specific age or time is a construct that does not serve us especially when we don't know what the future holds. Everyone's journey is different and valid. Recognize results through your hardships too, rather than lost time. So I want to uh, finish off this tip with a couple of inspirational sources. So there's this quote that I really love. It's, it states, if you are depressed, you are living in the past. If you are anxious, you are living in the future. If you are at peace, you are living in the presence. And this quote, is by Lao Tzu. I hope I pronounced that right. And I would also like to end this tip by saying just keep practicing presence and a really good book that I will probably do an analysis if you guys would like to hear an analysis or dissection of this book later down the line, I would love to do it. It's called The Power of Now, now by Eckhart Tolle. It's a really good book, I highly recommend it. And they have audiobooks as well. Tip number 11, again, Celebrate successes more often and give yourself more credit. You will never be an artist or a creator of your own life if you continue telling yourself that you aren't one. I like to tell the story with people because it kind of goes for everything. I had this teacher at Concept Design Academy, his name was Patrick Balesteros, and he taught something very important in um, our, con um, our dynamic sketching classes. He taught the concept of mileage. He would talk about why it was important to draw all of our drawings, or sketch all of our artwork in pen rather than pencil, so that we weren't able to erase in our books. And the reason why he taught us this was because he wanted all of us to see all of the work that we put that we all the work and time that we put into every single drawing so he wanted us to see that it sometimes does take a hundred doodles or rough sketches to reach that one good drawing and he wanted us to kind of remind ourselves that when we see when we go on social media and we see a really beautiful drawing oftentimes we think that these artists come up with this stuff right off the bat but he tells us you don't see all of the drawings that go into that one drawing or all the drawings that they had to draw beforehand in order to reach that one drawing. A lot of artists don't put their their rough sketches out online. They only put their best stuff. So oftentimes we beat ourselves up right off the bat when we don't reach that one masterpiece, that one full masterpiece right away. And he also talked about how Control Z uh, in Photoshop or online drawing programs and stuff is the devil because we will spend hours on a drawing and we will feel like nothing is getting done or we will feel like not accomplished at all because we will just see like, I don't know, one sloppy rough doodle or something. But he told us, he was like, you didn't see all of the lines that you laid down, that you control Z, that you erased every single time. And it helps for us to see those lines so we can see how much work we're putting into our drawings. And the way he was teaching mileage for us was if we drew in pen, we were able to see our mistakes and learn from them. And just, we were able to just know when we should just start a drawing from scratch again and just start over. And we would also not feel like crap about ourselves about it because we saw how much time and effort it took to get to that point. So I like to apply this to life and I like to see that all the time and effort that we put into anything at all that we focus on doing is not for nothing. For myself, I like to see in all the dance classes that I take, even though I feel like I'm not improving or getting any better, I see all the, the 
little things that I do in dance or like all the dance recordings that I'll do from dance class and I see that like no that's all in my head I am getting better and I'm putting so much focus and energy into just dancing and just doing it every single time even if it's just for 10 minutes you know like or whatever or just an hour a week like y you can still improve so much it's really good to track your progress and document it I always tell people to record themselves in dance it doesn't have to be for social media it could be for yourself because years down the line it's very important to see how much you have improved in those moments when you feel like you're just not good enough and this is important for fitness too I always tell people that it's important to take photos monthly of your body and yourself in the mirror front profile and side profile and all of that when you're trying to reach fitness goals because it's you see your prog when you see your progress you actually get more motivated to keep going rather than you know not knowing how much you've lost or gained or how much muscle you've created in your body or whatever you're looking to do or just losing weight it's important to just track your progress and it, i know sometimes it's hard for us to like look at these photos and stuff of where we like where we were at our you know the beginning stages of our journey you know and but in the end when you keep tracking your progress you when you look back on those on those photos or those moments you just feel so powerful and you're like, wow, I did that. And it allows you to gain more confidence to do anything else in your life. Another thing is remember that we've been hardwired to beat ourselves up because of survival instinct. Back in the day, perfection, no, not, necessar not necessarily perfection, but like making sure that we did everything right back in the day literally meant if we didn't we would die or like it could also mean that like we would l lose approval from our social groups or our family um, and we are a social pe a, a social species so if we didn't receive any love or connection because of because we weren't doing something right or because we weren't doing something good enough kind of think of like a runt in a litter if a runt is super weak and if the mother of that litter or whatever knows that in the wild that that runt is small and weak and knows that it's less sorry siren so if the mother the mother will most likely see that that run to the litter is weak and will most likely have least chance of surviving she will focus more of her energy on the stronger i don't know babies of her litter because they have a higher chance of surviving and in order for her to survive she can only put so much of her energy onto you know so much uh, obviously this this has changed but the concept is still there. Even in society today, you'll see that the more the more we get disapproved of or we don't receive love from our family or loved ones, the l least connection that we make with our uh, with people and relationships that we have in our life, the less we are connected to um, humanity or people around us. Depression spikes. Loneliness is a huge epidemic amongst hu humans, humankind all over the world and you'll notice that that does sometimes literally mean death for us our body manifests illness out of depression and stress and um, our body sometimes takes ourselves out and you'll see that big thing too especially here where i live um, drugs become a thing coping mechanisms become a thing and this is all a result of lack of love and connection with people around us. We are a social species. We are not meant to be living alone. If we are alone, that means death for us. Last but not least, authenticity. This is tip number 12. Do things for you. This is my most important on this entire list of tips because remember, if you do things for someone else or for uh, inauthentic reasons like if we do something because it means that we'll gain more worth or success or you know abundance that means we're just living our life inauthentically and most likely down the line it will it will crash it won't last very long because it's not true to ourselves and you will know when it's not true to yourself you will feel that void in your heart so I can say this for, for example, when I'm drawing for other people, I notice I don't have as much fun because I like start to succumb to like, 
what if they have expectations of this? What if they don't like it? And I start to like, just go on and on. Like if they don't like it, that means I suck, I fail, da 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 da. But then when I draw for myself or when I dance for myself and not for anyone else and just literally just for the enjoyment of myself and I don't set expectations for myself, things just flow so much better and just feel so much better. So just practice authenticity and being the best person you can be, being the best version of yourself and always doing things for you because you like to do it, not because someone else likes it or because you think that if you do this, someone else will like you more. Even though it doesn't sound like it has anything to do with the question that we asked in the very beginning of this podcast, if you really live your life to just this concept, you'll notice a huge difference in your life. You'll notice that you'll stop caring about seeking validation outside of yourself and you'll all you you'll figure out that all you need is validation from yourself and this just self-love is the biggest gift that you can ever give yourself so that concludes episode one of my very first podcast well not very first but my personal podcast thank you so much if you listen to the very end of this if you have any suggestions or ideas or topics that you want me to touch up on please let me know down in the comments down below. I will leave in the description of this episode on YouTube or iTunes a source where you can also email me if you want to email me ideas or stories or anything that you would like to share with me as far as all the ideas that I mentioned at the very beginning of this podcast. Just please, I would love, the feedback is the most important thing. I would love for some feedback because I want this to be very a very consistent thing and I want to record often and provide as much content to you guys and I want this to be like I said before a time to just reflect and connect and if you want to follow me on social media I you can find me on Instagram at Sabrina Matti if you are more, more focused on art you can follow my art page on Instagram at Sabrina Matti slash art um, if you love makeup I have an Instagram it's Sabrina Matti slash uh, not slash I'm sorry it's underscore if I said slash earlier I meant underscore and then I also do photography. You can find it on Instagram, Sabrina Matti underscore photography. Otherwise, on my main page, I post absolutely everything and link absolutely everything. You can find me on YouTube if you're most likely listening to this on YouTube, but you can find me on youtube.com slash Sabrina Matti. And you can find the podcast episodes on there. And I think that's about it. I do have a Tumblr for my art, it's my portfolio, pretty much, because I just post nothing but art on there. It's just sabrinamatti.tumblr.com. Everything is just Sabrina Matti. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for listening. I love you all. I can't wait to record more and record the next episode. Have a wonderful week, month. Until next time. I don't know how to close this out. We're going to... Because, you know what, we're gonna develop a good closing, closing line or something. Everyone has like that closing line that they say to everybody. But for right now, I love you all. Thank you so much. Have a good week. Bye-bye.